Like, I, I thought it would be really interesting to have your analysis uh, of the event of this edition because yeah. it's the yeah. well, 10 years yeah, yeah. Um, and I met many people and it's really interesting how they have they like the solutions that they are proposed for different countries and I have the feeling there is kind of a trend to new opportunities in the finance sector, like for instance new solutions for payments, credits, so I was hoping to have your, your feelings. Yeah, that. well that's very kind of you to say so. So this is um, yeah, it's our 10th year, it's a record-breaking year. And what's happened is that this is developed really into Africa's big investment event. Now, you correctly identified that uh, the financial services payments are a major part of the opportunity that investors are now seeing uh, in the continent. But I think we're also seeing a much broader range of opportunities on the tech side now appearing in Africa. So one of the great advantages of tech uh, companies operating in Africa is they can operate cross-border um, relatively effectively and efficiently, <coughs> as opposed to the traditional as opposed to the traditional structure where you used to have uh, companies in each of the countries which became very uh, difficult to manage and complex and also quite expensive. So here at AXIC, we have a whole range of different types of investments. So they vary from the venture capital funds uh, who will fund the early stage projects in Africa all the way up to sovereign wealth funds, which will only look at very substantial projects, something sometimes maybe $50 million and above. Um, they, uh, as you mentioned, the fintech sector is very popular, but really here we've got a, a wide offering in our deal book. I don't know if you can see the deal book, but we have um, yeah, 150 deals in there, and they're really across every sector. Some of the, uh, some of the sectors that we've seen is education, health, agriculture, energy, mining, uh, financial services, but really across all the different types of uh, sectors and um, the types of companies that are looking for investment here. So we have companies, but we also have funds. So the funds will invest in multiple different companies and uh, we've got a lot of investors here who will invest directly into funds, only as opposed to direct companies. Okay, that's it. And sorry, but back to, uh, to finance, I was yeah. wondering if there is like a new trend in the kind of solution uh, companies can uh, offer because also of the the, the current issues uh, some uh, countries are facing uh, yeah. the currency issues yeah. the inflation rate uh, but this can also be uh, an opportunity for new uh, solutions yeah no i think we've seen some very interesting uh, products in the payments sector cross-border payments and a few initiatives from some of the major multilateral uh, organizations that operate um, in Africa, like Africa Zim Bank, mm -hmm. uh, who are developing some interesting uh, payment solutions uh, as part of their Africa Trade Gateway. Um, and also, we've seen um, FSD Africa has been involved in Africa's first uh, green bond and there's been a lot of focus on climate bonds and uh, these are really exciting areas for investors at the moment as the ESG considerations of investment in Africa have become more important from a global perspective. Uh, and so I think you, so you mentioned that FSD Africa is one of your sponsors. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So this is a media. Yeah. This is a media. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. yeah. and uh, who are your other like main sponsors? So we've got a very. Um, so we've got Steers is our premier sponsor. They are a, a fantastic information provision company, providing uh, investors with uh, fantastic data on Africa. And uh, then we have uh, companies like Ebury, sure. who are very much involved in the payments side and trying to facilitate investors in Africa do cross-border payments at large scale and help them in areas where they may traditionally have found it quite difficult to operate, um, to make sure that that process of investing into a country and remitting, prop and remitting 
money is as um, simple as possible. And uh, what about AppSeq and, uh, and you? Like, uh, what is it exactly? What is the organization behind it? And how did you fund it? Well, um, yeah, thank you. So, so basically, my background is I used to run um, the Botswana Stock Exchange, and then I built up a uh, uh, an investment bank in Botswana that um, was instrumental in developing a whole range of new uh, products and did a, a range of uh, new capital raisings and listings. And that was in the 1990s. And since then, um, I have developed this network across Africa, really focused on matching investment opportunities across the continent. So I launched APSIC 10 years ago as a mechanism to bring global investors focused on Africa um, into the same room as companies and funds that are seeking investment. Now, over the course of 10 years, it's established a very strong track record in terms of the matching process. And what we're now trying to do is to assist the event by providing a, uh, a range of digital platforms that will continue the matching process beyond the life of the actual event itself. So we have got uh, two platforms that are operational and actually have the potential to transform business, trade and investment in Africa. So our first platform is our APSIC African Investments Dashboard which is a closed platform. It's only accessible by institutional investors because the information that goes on to it can often be very confidential and uh, people who are raising money do not want that information to be public. So that's accessible to institutional investors. And that has proven to be very successful at capturing a very wide range of deals, some of which are in our deal room. So that's a, a subset of the much broader database that we have of investment opportunities really across all 54 countries uh, and regions in Africa. When was it created, this platform? That was done in 2019. Mm -hmm. And uh, so continually, uh, we have a process of now continual improvements being planned. So we're likely to see that platform uh, transform quite substantially in the next 12 months. And uh, I would expect that platform to continue to play an increasingly important role in matching the investment opportunities. We then have a, a really interesting platform, which is open for all to use. Uh, it's free, both of these platforms are free to use. And this is matching business at scale across all 54 countries in Africa. It's called our Africa Business Opportunities Dashboard. And what we're doing is we're, we're using AI to match people in Africa, regardless of what sector they're in and the size of their business, to match them to counterpart business opportunities. Whether you're looking to find a business partner, whether you're looking to find investment, whether you're trying to sell more products or buy, or buy products, we're trying to find a counterpart using AI for people that are in a continental, on a continental basis. And we're seeing that platform um, grow and it has the potential to, again, transform a business at a continental level. And anyone can uh, register? Anybody can register. It's free to use. Uh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. And when was it created? So that was created in 2021. So it's very recent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, two more uh, questions. Uh, I've heard that the Mauritius Island Centre uh, a yeah. big delegation. Is it the biggest yeah. delegation this year? So we've had two big de delegations. Um, one from uh, Mauritius, and they've been long-standing supporters of uh, APSIC. And of course, many of the investors who are uh, investing into Africa have Mauritian domiciled mm. uh, funds or entities. Uh, and it's proven to be a very successful international financial center for companies who want to operate into Africa. We've also had a very significant delegation from both FSD, F financial sector deepening Africa, but also FSD Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So Ethiopia 
is the largest country in the world to not have a stock exchange. And this year, uh, FSD Ethiopia is supporting the, uh, the launch of the Ethiopian Stock Exchange, which would be a trans which has the potential to be a transformational event in Ethiopia's economy. And uh, we have, we have uh, ADAPSIC, the Sovereign Wealth Fund, the National Trade and Investment Promotion Agency from Ethiopia. And it's been a very exciting opportunity for investors to meet some of the key organizations focused on growing Ethiopia's economy. Uh, in the next uh, few decades. Okay. Okay. That's interesting because it was actually my next question oh. about the, the European <laughs> Stock Exchange. Right, right, right. Because as you uh, participated in the Botswana um, yeah, Stock right. Exchange, yeah, yeah. I imagine yeah. you have like yeah, you know, you've been following the European yeah. market yeah. in Ethiopia. And, yeah. It's a massive opportunity. The opening of the Ethiopian capital markets is a massive opportunity for Ethiopia to attract substantial inflows of foreign capital that will support the growth of Ethiopian businesses in coming years. Uh, and it will it has the potential to transform the, the economy and to lead to substantial growth in employment in the country and strengthening of some of the major companies in the country.